This video describes how to perform an ultrasound-guided popliteal sciatic nerve block. The popliteal sciatic nerve block is used to provide analgesia or anesthesia of the lower limb below the knee. Important points to note are that the area of the saphenous nerve is not blocked, that anesthesia for a thigh tourniquet must be supplied separately, and that measures must be taken to deal with foot drop and pressure injury to the heel in a bed-bound patient. Apart from the standard equipment and preparation for any peripheral nerve block, the following is specifically needed for a popliteal sciatic nerve block. A linear ultrasound probe, a 50 or 80 millimeter needle depending on patient's body habitus and whether an out-of-plane or in-plane needle approach is planned, and 20 to 30 mils of a suitable local anesthetic solution. At our institution, we use a 1 to 1 mixture of 2% lidocaine and 0.5% bupivacaine with 2.5 micrograms per mil of epinephrine for surgical anesthetic blocks and 0.25% bupivacaine or 0.5% ropivacaine for blocks that are designed just to provide postoperative analgesia. Intravenous or perineural dexamethasone may be added, but note that this can result in a very long lasting block usually well over 24 hours. The patient can be positioned in one of three ways, prone, lateral, or supine. The prone position is the most ergonomic for the operator, but may be difficult to achieve if the patient's leg is in a cast of fixation device or in the very obese or unwell patient. The lateral position is a good alternative in these situations for both patient and operator. The supine position does not require repositioning the patient, but requires some sort of support to elevate the leg. It is ergonomically more challenging as the probe must be lifted up against gravity to apply the appropriate pressure, and only a lateral in-plane approach can be used. It is personally my least favoured position. Note that in all the positions, scanning and nerve visibility is optimal when the knee is straight and not bent. Regardless of patient position, the probe is placed and maneuvered in exactly the same manner. Step one, always place the probe in a transverse orientation starting at the popliteal crease. It's vital to start here for two reasons. The popliteal artery is in its most superficial location and the sciatic nerve will always have split into its two components of tibial and common perineal nerves. Next, identify the popliteal artery as a pulsating hypoechoic structure. This is usually obvious if you hold the probe absolutely still. Step three, identify the tibial nerve, which is superficial or posterior to the artery. The probe must usually be tilted, usually towards the feet to make the nerves light up or become more hyperechoic. The nerves are anisotropic in this location, so their brightness and echogenicity will vary with the angle of the ultrasound beam. Adjust as necessary. Identify the common perineal nerve next. This is best done by sliding the probe laterally to bring the expected location of the common perineal nerve into view. Then, slide the probe proximally and distally back and forth in a smooth motion and the common perineal nerve will become evident as a smaller structure that swoops down from a lateral and superficial position to join the larger tibial nerve and then up and away again. This next video illustrates this. The probe is slid back and forth, proximally and distally, in a smooth motion. As you do this, look at the ultrasound screen for an object or structure to swoop in from the lateral and superficial part of the screen towards the tibial nerve and then up and away again. This will be the common perineal nerve. Once you've done this, identify an appropriate injection point at the bifurcation of the sciatic nerve. A unique and important consideration with the popliteal sciatic nerve is that it is surrounded by a well-defined fascial sheath. 
The sheath is analogous to a pair of pants, with the legs representing the two nerves and the torso, the main sciatic trunk. The aim is to place the needle tip safely into the zone of connective tissue at the crotch of the pants or fascial sheath without breaching skin or epineurium. This is safer than trying to enter the sheath proximally at the level of the main trunk, where the potential space between the two nerves is very small. It is also more efficient than injecting distally, where the nerves are separate, as local anesthetic injected at the bifurcation will spread proximally and distally to completely envelop the nerve without need for repositioning the needle. The best location, in my opinion, is therefore where the nerves are close but not quite touching. The last step in the scanning phase is to plan the needle insertion and trajectory. Either an in-plane or out-of-plane approach may be used. The out-of-plane approach offers the shortest distance to the nerve and is useful where the nerve lies deep. It is also my preferred approach for catheter insertion as it allows me to thread the catheter along the nerve without risk of tip malposition. The in-plane approach is, however, easier for many people in terms of needle tip visibility, always assuming though that you can maintain good needle beam alignment. One other important consideration is the orientation of the nerves. They may be side by side or in more of an up and down arrangement. This influences the chosen needle trajectory, particularly if using the lateral in-plane approach. In the side by side configuration, the needle can be inserted close to the lateral edge of the probe to reach the bifurcation zone, but it must be advanced at a relatively steep trajectory. A shallow trajectory risks the needle tip striking the tibial nerve as it is advanced through the sheath, particularly because it is harder to pierce fascia at shallower angles. A clinical pearl is that sliding the probe to bring the nerve target closer to the lateral edge of the screen as shown here, rather than keeping it in the center of the screen, will make it easier to achieve the correct trajectory that avoids hitting both nerves. In the up and down configuration, the needle should be inserted on the lateral aspect of the thigh in a more or less horizontal trajectory, which will allow you to place the tip into the safe zone of the bifurcation while avoiding the common perineal nerve. A lateral to needle approach from the edge of the probe is going to risk hitting the common perineal nerve and is generally not recommended. Alternatively, if the patient is in a prone position, a medial to lateral in-plane approach can be used as seen here. If the out-of-plane approach is used, orientation is less of a concern as the safe zone of the bifurcation can always be reached without risk of piercing the nerves. Having chosen the appropriate needle approach and trajectory, we move on to actual needling and injection. Advance the needle tip to pierce the paraneural sheath surrounding the nerves. Always aim the needle tip at a tangent to the nerves and at the safe zone of connective tissue between them so that if you inadvertently overshoot when pushing through the tough sheath, the risk of trauma to the nerves is minimized. Entry into the sheath is signaled by tactile and visual cues, the pop as you pierce the sheath and the elastic recoil of the tissues. Hydrolocation with a 0.5 mil volume of injection will confirm whether or not the needle tip is in the correct position. This brings us to the last step, assessing and recognizing appropriate spread of local anesthetic. There are actually many layers of tissue around the sciatic nerve. There is the epineurium of the nerves, which we do not want to breach. There is the paraneural sheath. And around that, the epimysium. The epimysium is the layer which encases the surrounding muscle. For maximum efficacy, the needle tip should be within the paraneural sheath itself rather than between the epimysium and paraneurium. This can be recognized by the spread pattern of test injections of fluid. An intramuscular injection will spread up and away within the muscle. In this out-of-plane popliteal block, you'll see that our initial test injection is spreading under the muscle, but up and away from the nerve, signaling injection under the epimysium, but still outside the fascial sheath. Advancing one pop deeper will produce spread that expands and starts to outline the individual nerves. 
Note that when advancing, it is vital to focus on the feel of fascial pops more than trying to see the tip on the ultrasound screen. As you inject in small fractionated amounts, scan away from your needle to assess and confirm that there is no nerve expansion suggesting intraneural injection. Note that mild discomfort is sometimes reported by the patient from the pressure of injection around the nerves. Scanning off and away from your needle during injection also confirms that local anesthetic is spreading proximally around the main trunk and distally around both tibial and common perineal nerves, filling up the fascial sheath. If this is seen, no needle repositioning is needed and the entire volume of local anesthetic can be delivered at this spot. This video illustrates this. Injection within the sheath at the bifurcation should produce spread along the entire nerve. So while injecting, scan away from the needle to confirm this. Again, in this out of plane popliteal block, the needle tip is between tibial and common perineal nerves and injection spreads around them. Proximal scanning shows both nerves surrounded by local anesthetic and distal scanning shows the same thing. Note that this patient is unusual in that the common perineal nerve is split into two elements, which can sometimes cause confusion with identification. What follows are some further examples of actual blocks to illustrate all the points we've discussed. The in-plane popliteal block may be performed in the supine, prone, or lateral position. Start scanning at the popliteal crease and look for the common perineal nerve to swing down from a lateral and superficial position to join the tibial nerve. In this patient, the common perineal nerve is again divided into two elements, which come together proximally before joining the tibial nerve to form the sciatic nerve. Here at the bifurcation, the nerves share a common perineural sheath. The orientation of the nerves makes an angled approach from the edge of the probe difficult. Instead, the needle is inserted with a horizontal trajectory to pass under the common perineal to reach the safe bifurcation zone. The needle is carefully advanced, always at a tangent to the nerve, watching it roll away and feeling for tactile pops as fascial layers are pierced. Hydrolocation initially shows spread away from the nerve, indicating that the tip is not within the perineal sheath. So the tip is carefully repositioned by withdrawing and re-advancing closer to the common perineal nerve. Hydrodissection is used to open up the spaces before further advancement. Once the spaces are more evident, the tip can be more precisely placed into the bifurcation zone. As long as the injected local anesthetic spreads around both nerves, further repositioning is not required. post-block survey scan confirms the absence of nerve expansion and intraneural injection and also that local anesthetic has spread proximally up to and beyond the level of the mid-thigh. In this out-of-plane popliteal block, Common perineal and tibial nerves are identified at the popliteal crease using the pendulum maneuver of scanning proximally and distally. The nerves are very superficial in this patient. The skin is infiltrated with local anesthetic, but unfortunately some air is injected obscuring the tibial nerve. 
Fortunately though, the common perineal nerve and the bifurcation zone are still visible and the needle is advanced carefully into this area. Local anesthetic spreads deep to the overlying fascia, but on closer examination, it is tending to push the nerves downwards and surrounding both of them as a single unit. This indicates that the tip is not yet within the perineal sheath. The needle is advanced one pop and one fascia layer deeper. Now the spread of local is occurring within the perineal sheath and is tracking around each nerve, separating it from the fascia and outlining it clearly. A post-block scan confirms that the injected local anesthetic volume has tracked proximally up to the mid-thigh, producing circumferential spread around the sciatic nerve. Thank you for watching and check out the other videos on this channel for more ultrasound guided regional anesthetic techniques.